time now for your forewarned weather with Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy. Okay, halfway through the work week, things are picking up in the weather world, it looks like. Boy, howdy, what a day out there. Huh, That's Alana? a good way to put it. It was a bit of a wild Wednesday for some as those strong storms move through. I want to show you what it looked like this evening as we had decaying thunderstorms hit Roosevelt. This is Duchenne County. Look at this wind. Blowing dust, visibility drops. This was around 8 o'clock tonight. Unbelievable. As we look at the highest wind speeds here, we forewarned you that we could see a few severe storms, and that's what happened. 52-mile-per-hour gust in Provo. It's a big number there. Delta getting some hefty wind as well. 44 miles per hour at Lake Powell where they had a really nice complex of storms roll through that actually brought in some severe weather. Live view from Beaver County. Camera freezing here just a little bit. Well, we catch the rain going down on I-15 southbound and that's where we have a lot of moisture, plenty of lightning and some gusty winds. Forewarn radar sweeping the region with active skies tonight. Getting a little closer. Activity in the West Desert tracking towards Utah County, so the southern end of the Wasatch Front. Now, we did have decaying storms for Salt Lake County, where we got gusty winds, but we could see if those hold together as we head into tonight. A little further south into central Utah from Nephi all the way down to Beaver County, we still have wet weather and plenty of lightning. As we zoom in a little closer, we're starting to quiet in the south central higher terrain, but look at that, right over I-15 near Manderfield. Richfield, also soggy conditions on I-70. So we jump over to eastern Utah, south of the basin, as we look at Uinta County, we've got some lightning getting a little bit of a break there in Price. Castle Country was active. Today we had a moisture surge, another monsoon surge with a moist southwest flow because our high slid a little bit to the east, allowing for an abundance of moisture for this time of year to be present. We have a trough moving through and we capitalized on that with the development of storms. Satellite radar shows us that. So we look at the last several hours. That is just not friendly. And we watched that line in the West Desert. We did get a wall up in Utah County, wall of water there, we saw a lot of wet weather. And then the basin, eastern Utah, with several flash flood warnings in south central Utah and on the state line. You know, once the storm passes, you can always catch a nice rainbow. Good one. I love this one from Duchesne County and always appreciate those submissions. Dawn caught this sunset in Sandy, a little unsettled and moody, but I'm here for it. That is a beautiful shot. High temperatures today still hot, 96 in Salt Lake, 88 is our average, so running above average, but cooler than the last few days. 90s on the eastern side of the state, 105 in St. George. Now we begin a cooling trend as we head through the overnight. Can't rule out a nocturnal storm. I'm talking northwestern Utah and the northern portion of the Wasatch Front as our cold front approaches. 78 as we close close out the news. The potential for a shower or thunderstorm is there for the overnight and into the early morning commute. Low 70s expected for those lows. And if you head out early between 5 and 7, northern Utah could bring active skies and that chance of storms holds on for your Thursday. We're going to see widespread potential with cloud cover and moisture present, but that cold front is the big thing. So our high over to the east, bringing in that southwest flow. That low sends the front all the way through for our Thursday. That cold front looks organized. It's going to be a strong one. High pressure bounces back after we cool down Friday, and then maybe into next week we'll get another cool down. Storm threat for tomorrow is elevated. Marginal risk here for a big portion of Utah. Big slice of I-15 in the central portion of the state. That's where we could see isolated severe storms. The general thunderstorm threat for the rest of the Wasatch Front and the West Desert exists for your Thursday. Futurecast walks us through the timing. That's what's great about it. You know what to expect. Here we go into tonight. This is why here we are by midnight. Storms possibly in between Salt Lake and Utah County. But watch northern Utah. Cache Valley, you're not out of the mix. Look at the West Desert by 2 a.m. So active potential holds on. Which, with a few thunderstorms, our cold front comes into view. Here we are by the afternoon. Storms already firing off in eastern Utah. There's that moisture push. We've got a lot of lingering moisture. We'll capitalize it along that front as it moves into central Utah and keeps eastern Utah fairly active through 8 p.m. We start to dry out later into tomorrow night. That will allow temperatures to cool for your Friday, but drier conditions on deck for the close of the work week. Brand new flood watch for Grand County to the 
Four Corners is going into effect tomorrow afternoon through the evening. Not a surprise. We've seen several warnings in the last little while. Probable or possible risk for flash flooding at all of our recreation areas. Temperatures drop. Low 90s in Salt Lake. 80s and 90s for the Wasatch Front. 80s and 90s on the eastern side. The state's still hot in St. George. You don't get much of a break. Look at the next seven as those triple digits hold steady. It's just a slight chance with increased moisture. As we see the winds pick up over the weekend, I'm going to forewarn you now. We could see fire danger increase. Don't be surprised if you hear about critical fire conditions. Wasatch Front with scattered storms for our Thursday, slight chance Friday. That ridge strengthens Saturday, Sunday. I'm putting my money on Friday. I love a day in the Indies, friends. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to just say drier Friday, nice temperatures. Tomorrow looks really unsettled. I'll, I'll tell you, though, Wes did not sound too excited about those St. George temperatures. Oh, 